क्या करना बता भी इस क्लास का बोलना और डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास यस सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर या यू कैन स्टार्ट नाउ गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी प्रेजेंटिंग अ केस टुडे दिस केस इज अ 21 इयर्स ओल्ड मेल स्टूडेंट बाय प्रोफेशन हु इज अ रेजिडेंट ऑफ झुंझुनू came with complaints of recurrent episodes of lump over upper half of abdomen since last 3 months he uh, this this was associated with severe pain in abdomen which lasted for 5 to 6 days to be precise from 1st of july till 6th of july it was associated with weight loss and early satiety history of present illness before the current admission the patient had three prior admissions he was apparently all right till march 14 2022 when he sustained a blunt trauma abdomen which was a handlebar uh, injury of a bike over a <laughs> start from first sir no no it's okay carry on i'll catch up i just started sir just just show me the first slide A 21 years old student, uh, uh, who is a student by profession, who is a resident of Jhunjhunu, came with complaints of recurrent episodes of lump over upper half of abdomen since last three months. Uh, so, uh, and complaints of severe pain in abdomen, which lasted for five to six days, uh, to be precise, from 1st of July till 6th of July, and associated with weight loss and early satiety. History of present illness. before the present uh, current admission the patient had three prior admissions he was apparently all right till march 14 2022 when he sustained a blunt trauma abdomen which was a handlebar injury of a bike over upper quadrant of abdomen he was admitted in the hospital and evaluated and managed conservatively he was told to have sustained injury to the pancreas he was discharged on supportive treatment the second admission was one month later when he presented with complaints of abdominal distension in the upper abdomen with early satiety and decreased appetite with vague lump felt by the patient in the upper abdomen it was associated with intermittent dull aching pain in epigastrium non radiating non migrating with no aggravating or relieving factors he also complained of passage of bulky oily foul smelling stools during this period he underwent cect abdomen followed by some upper gi endoscopic intervention for the same which was followed by resolution of of the symptoms there were no complaints of nausea or vomiting or fever during that time he was again admitted on 28th of june 2022 with complaint uh, with similar complaints of abdominal distension associated with nausea and non bilious non projectile vomiting vomiting was mixed with undigested undigested food particles and not containing blood it was associated with severe throbbing pain in abdomen radiating to the back with no aggravating or relieving factors the pain was non migrating it was not associated with food posture or time of the day <clears throat> there were no fever or chills he was admitted and evaluated and managed conservatively in the present admission he had a lump over upper quadrant not uh, associated with early satiety uh, and fullness no complaints of pain in the current admission sir he had a history of decreased appetite with significant weight loss from 74 kg to 60 kg in last 5 to 6 months which was not associated with any functional impairment in the patient there was no history of jaundice pruritus clay colored stools or high colored urine no history of any hematemesis or malina past history no similar complaints in the past no uh, medical past medical history no history of any diabetes mellitus hypertension tuberculosis epilepsy no history of any previous medical or surgical history personal history patient consumes a uh, normal mixed diet with currently decreased appetite with normal sleep pattern bowel functions are normal there was no uh, no history of any drug allergies or any known addictions 
फैमिली हिस्ट्री नो हिस्ट्री ऑफ सिमिलर कंप्लेट इन दैमिली मैं समराइज द केस सर प्लीज समराइजिंग माई केस इट्स अ ट्वेंटी वन इयर्स ओल्ड पेशेंट presented with history of blunt trauma abdomen sustained 5 months ago with recurrent episodes of lump in abdomen with episodes of pain in abdomen with significant weight loss and with probable features of bowel absorption with no history of any fever no history of uh, no family history or personal history or factors or features uh, suggestive of inciting these symptoms or complaints with resolution of all these symptoms following endoscopic intervention Okay, let's start from the beginning, sir. Yeah. So when you say this, uh, I think that uh, what comes to my mind is that something has is happening spontaneously. Do you think that all these things are related to the trauma he has had? Ah, uh, yes, sir. So should trauma not come in the presenting complaints? Uh, okay. Isn't it because see there are two types of examiners. Some examiners will listen to your entire presentation and then start questioning you. Okay. But sir. some examiners have a habit that in between they will interrupt. So as, suppose you are having an online exam, you show this slide, and then you show the next slide where you come with history of trauma. Then uh, I may interrupt you and say that is trauma not so trauma is directly related in this case to whatever is happening, isn't it? Okay, sir. so i think it should come here that either you say that uh, history of trauma 5 months ago or you say here only that following an uh, episode of trauma blunt okay. abdomen upper abdominal trauma 5 months ago okay yes sir now what do you mean by recurrent episodes of lump sir uh, following an intervention of uh, of radiological uh, following an endoscopic intervention the symptoms of lump as well as other other complaints resolved out so now, i think i yeah i think i missed but is it that he noticed lump earlier also or is it that he has noticed lump only now sir in the second admission when he was admitted he complained uh, he presented with complaints of abdominal distension with a vague lump felt by the patient himself sir in the okay. epigastric in the upper abdomen part fine fine So I missed that. Yes. Uh, go back. Go back to the first one. <coughs> Before this. Hmm. So uh, again, uh, early satiety should come before weight loss because that is what probably has resulted in weight loss. Uh, sir, and okay. you have to understand the difference between has he lost his appetite or is he not able to eat? There is a difference. Yes, sir. Most probably, it is early satiety, postprandial fullness, rather than loss of appetite. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Next. Yeah. So I think the story should start with trauma. That yeah, on trauma. this day. he had a blunt upper abdominal trauma okay, and sir. then so okay next now there are some medical terms which are difficult to spell like hirschsprung disease intersusception immunosuppression but common terms like appetite should be correctly spelled the correct spelling of appetite is a double p and pruritus is one of the most commonly misspelled it is not pruritus it is not an inflammatory condition it is pruritus p u s very common mistake done by students and even some faculty members the ascites yeah ascites also it is not ascites it is ascites p e s yes sir hmm. okay so what do you think can you explain everything which you have asked yes sir uh, sir in the uh, in the second admission sir uh, that was uh, which happened in april uh, he he presented with complaints of abdominal distension with early satiety and don't repeat don't repeat what is written give your uh, analysis sir uh, probably uh, like uh, as uh, as in the first admission he was told to have sustained a injury in the pancreas probably there might have been a disruption in the duct Uh, which might have led to uh, pseudocyst formation 
uh, uh, in the in the vicinity, which might have uh, put in pressure or, or mass symptoms over the stomach, uh, causing a decreased appetite and early satiety, sir. Sorry, early satiety and decreased appetite. Reverse effect. Sorry. What do you mean by vicinity? Sir, pardon, sir? You said uh, pseudocyst in the vicinity. What do you mean by vicinity? Where... Sir, uh... Uh, sir, pseudocyst in the vicinity, in in a sense, in the uh, in the lesser sac, sir. To say that that is the commonest site where fluid collection occurs, True, and that, that is the one which will usually cause all these symptoms: early satiety, postprandial fullness, inability to eat, vomiting. So lesser sac, okay. Sir. Hmm. Next. And uh, there was associated, uh, sir, uh, associated with dull aching pain, which might have been because of stretching of the pseudocyst or pressure symptoms because of the pseudocyst itself, sir? Stools? Uh, sir, uh, regarding the stools, sir, uh, the, uh, there, there might be because of uh, complete diversion of the pancreatic fluid from draining into the duodenum, leading to a, a stool which is bulky, oily, foul-smelling. But yet I can't ascertain whether it is steatoria or not, sir. What else could it be? In this setting, what else? If he did not have the same symptoms earlier, if his stools earlier, here you should have mentioned that before this episode of trauma, he used to pass normal, normal stools, stools only, normal in bulk, normal in uh, smell yes. and uh, yes, consistency. So then obviously it is related to trauma. So this indicates a major ductal disruption uh, where there is uh, obvious exocrine insufficiency. Sir, and so this was... this. Uh... This was also uh, supported by his uh, uh, rapid loss of weight of around 14 kgs in five no, to six. In, sorry, in the previous previous slide, some you talked of some endoscopic intervention. Yes, sir. You didn't give any explanation for that. Sir, uh, the patient under, patient underwent CCT abdomen followed by some endoscopic intervention, uh, which, which might have been some drainage procedure. The patient actually doesn't know what endoscopic intervention was done. Uh, Maybe, but, it, but what what do you think could have been done? Sir, what could uh, be done? Can, uh, sir, it can uh, it could have been a diversion procedure wherein the pseudocyst like draining into the uh, stomach or duodenum, sir. Is it called diversion? Uh, sir, what it is, is called, it called? drainage procedure, sir. Hmm? Drainage endoscopic drainage yeah. procedure. So endoscopic in all likelihood cystogastrostomy because all his symptoms are suggesting that whatever fluid collection has formed or a pseudocyst has evolved is projecting into the stomach. That is why he is having early satiety. See, from the description, you can make a picture in your mind as to what would have CT shown. Most likely, the CT would have shown a large collection in the lesser sac, which is projecting into the stomach, compressing the stomach. So easiest would be to drain it into the stomach. That is most probably what would have been done. So endoscopic drainage of the pseudocyst into the stomach, or you can even call it endoscopic cystogastrosmy. That is the term which the endoscopists use. Sir. How do they drain it? Uh, sir, generally they prefer out uh, drainage on the greater curvature, along the greater how, curvature. How? Uh, sir, using a, using a monopolar cautery, sir. And there are actually, there are three, four approaches of it, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. One is, one is uh, to uh, pass out a stent through it. Mm -hmm. uh, or, Which stent? Sir, uh, there are, uh, like, either we use out a plastic stent mm -hmm. or we use out a, a lamp, sir. Metallic stent. Yeah. So it is basically a stent which is placed in the cyst. One end is placed in the cyst cavity. The other end is in the stomach. So you can place a plastic stent. You can place multiple plastic stents. After making the opening, they can dilate. And then ideal, of course, is a... Lamp, sir. Lumen opposing... Lumen what is lamps? A lumen opposing metallic uh, stent, sir. Yes. Okay. So then what happened? Uh, following it, the like uh, the symptoms result, sir. Uh, so when you, was... sorry, the, the last sentence you say no complaints of nausea or vomiting or fever during that time. What do you mean by during that time? Then after uh, the intervention, before the intervention, sir, before the intervention, sir. So then this line should come in with the first line when you sir. say that he had early satiety, but there is no nausea or vomiting. So these are grades of uh, uh, gastric outlet obstruction or gastro compression or gastroparesis. It starts with early satiety, postprandial fullness, inability to take a full meal, then nausea, then frank vomiting. So this line should come with the first line rather than here. 
here you should say of course you have already said that which was followed by resolution of symptoms okay hmm. yes sir yes. next So now, what do you think has happened? Sir, uh, like uh, on 28th of June, he presented with severe pain in abdomen with a re uh, repeat. Don't uh, don't repeat. Don't repeat. Sir, probably. What do you think is happening now? Probably the stent or uh, pro probably the uh, stent which has been placed has mm -hmm. either blocked out or has mm -hmm. migrated. Mm -hmm. And the pseudocyst has refilled Re because yes, there is a ductal communication, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. Then. Uh, it was associated with severe pain, sir, which is, again, non-specific, sir. So why do you talk of association with food, posture, time of the day? What, what is the order in your uh, mind? Sir, uh, no association with food or posture. Uh, sir, in regarding posture, whether it was acute pancreatitis, which has started in the patient, I wanted to rule that thing out. And association with food and time of the day is with pep ruling out with peptic ulcer disease, sir. Are you thinking of peptic ulcer disease in this patient? Sir, for ruling purposes, sir, but other than that, since it was in the epigastric region. Yeah, so this is what I was, or we were telling our students yesterday that if an MBBS student gives all these negative history, it is okay because we teach them that you take all possible negative history. But at your level, we don't expect you. And in fact, uh, we would, some examiners may even give you negative marks for this. That Why are you thinking of peptical, sir? Then how do you explain so many other things? Isn't it? Yes, sir. So very, very unlikely, very, very unlikely. So I don't think, and if at all you want to mention, posture should have come first because that is the most important association. Sir. So I don't think uh, uh, at this stage, uh, completely unrelated negative history probably may not be welcome. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, next. <clears throat> Why should, do you think that he could have had hematemesis or Melina? Uh, sir, Melina uh, ki bhi spelling galat hai. M E M E L E N A, hai na? Melina ki spelling? Melina. Yes. So why why should a patient like this have hematemesis or Melina? What is the possible explanation? Sir, pseudocyst compressing <laughs> over the splenic vein can mm -hmm. lead to a spleen, a portal hypertension, sinistral portal hypertension, leading to hematemesis. Mm -hmm. Which type of portal hypertension is this? Sinistral, sir, left-sided portal yes. hypertension. Yes. Then, uh, any other? Uh, or, or it can also lead to a splenic artery aneurysm with uh, bleeding into the cyst, sir. Is it a true aneurysm? Uh, sir, pseudo aneurysm, sir. Pseudo -aneurysm. Say pseudo aneurysm. Yeah. Don't don't prompt the examiner to ask counter questions. Every counter question asked gives you a negative mark, because yeah. that means your answer was incomplete in the first instance. Hmm. Okay. Next. What do you mean by no history of similar complaints in the family? So nobody else fell on the bar of the bike? Sir, uh, I wanted to rule out familial history of pancreatitis. <laughs> and no similar complaints in the past. So you expect a person to have trauma again and again? No, sir. Again, see, I won't use that word, but don't don't give all these things. Uh, at, at your level, these negative history uh, is not expected. As I said, an MBBS student, fine, but not at your level. Okay. Hmm. Okay, next. Hmm. Blunt abdomen, recurrent. I think there's some, as you have mentioned. So, again, the summary should come in chronological sequence. So, trauma. Then, uh, uh, sim you, in the summary, you can say symptoms suggestive of uh, uh, gastric compression or gastric uh, outlet obstruction. And then you should say that endoscopic intervention, which uh, resolved the symptoms, but again, uh, the, uh, record 
and the lump formed again and now he has presented with a lump so, what do you mean by have you read any medical textbook where it is written that factors which incite the symptoms is that the word used in medical texts inciting to aajkal ho rahi hai jo society mein it is aggravating it is not inciting okay the medical term is aggravating aggravating factors relieving factors okay yes so in the summary the important points are trauma then symptoms of uh, early satiety and postprandial fullness then endoscope lump then endoscopic intervention resolution of symptoms recurrence of symptoms with a lump significant weight loss features of malabsorption sir this second line in summary is not of any importance as we said family history and all is not important in this particular case and that in the last line he should have written with resolution of symptoms following endoscopic intervention with which we call subsequent yes okay sir okay. but yes, those all the students whenever you are making a presentation or if you are writing it on paper so your first impression goes with what you speak so if you use the wrong words it gives the impression that you have been casual about it if you are writing in a bad writing or when you are presenting it in a slide if your full stop comma capital and spaces and the wrong words are being used that shows your casual approach and then the words chosen which are non medical words means that you are not very sincere about what you are about to present i mean so now what happens is you have gone from the direction of interaction into a medical interaction to a non medical interaction because the your teacher or your examiner is now not happy with you so don't make him unhappy by this small thing which can be corrected at very small level okay anybody any examiner will feel unhappy about this and also we want all of you that tomorrow once you pass your mch exam and become a consultant in your own right then you will be required to teach your students you will be required to make presentations at meetings so uh, um, i would be happy if you uh, make good slides and make good presentation okay yes sir yeah never Chal. use fancy words inciting hmm? never use fancy words ha huh. use fancy words yes inciting all those words because you see english uh, uh, the difference between english and other language is this english has probably the least number of vocabulary and their word whatever it means it means you can't have your own interpretation in yes. hindi and other languages we have two thousand synonyms they all have final, final years. years all those who are in the final year all right. the students just see that the easiest way to improve on this is Make a first year present to you. Your first year can present to you daily. He will take the history in all the. I I don't expect any final year to take the history at the first interaction with the patient when he comes to board. Ask your first year to take the history present to you. You will understand what a teacher wants and how he can correct it. So gradually you will improve as a teacher as well as you will improve as a and your exam examination also because you will present it in a better way. I don't know. Anand uh, will vouch. Professor Nandi, come what may, patient might be dying, bleeding. He has been called. Unless you have a, a, a great banda of puri history sunaya, every word he will listen the entire history. Then only knife will be added over him. He won't uh, say. Hmm. Chalo next. Yeah. Diagnosis, sir. Post traumatic. Mm -hmm. If you would have written a D capital, that would have been have yes. shown that how sincere yes. you are. This is from the first slide. I mean, I've been observing yes. this is the first slide that you presented. You know, this is one soft slide. Huh? Hmm. The first letter should be respect. Uh, so what Doctor Ajay is trying to tell all of you that whatever you do, even if you think it is a small exercise, you must do with utmost sincerity. Apparently, I think pseudosis. They should never be small. And that is in the name. So post-traumatic pancreatitis, post-traumatic chronic pancreatitis, sir. Oh, acute pancreatitis, sir. Hmm. Although, yeah, you may argue that post-traumatic is always acute. So, okay, I will take it. Status endoscopic intervention, but 
endoscopic intervention successful or failed uh, failed endoscopic intervention sir you may although yeah. uh, failed would mean that it did not work at all it worked initially but there is recurrence so you can say uh, with recurrent pseudocyst formation following endoscopic intervention okay sir okay carry on i think we'll quickly move on to the management because that is important yeah examination sir uh, patient uh, patient conscious coherent well oriented moderately built and nourished uh, uh, weighed around 60 kg and height of 182 cm with a bmi of 18 kg per meter square patient had no pallor ictus cyanosis clubbing lymphadenopathy or pedal edema ecog status was 0 to 1 sir uh, vitals pulse was 68 per minute thank you very yeah, yeah, carry on, please. Pulse 68 per minute, BP 130, 90, saturation at 98% at room air, sir. Systemic examination, inspection, uh, a solitary, poorly defined globular lump of 11 into 13 centimeters noted in upper abdomen involving epigastrium, umbilicus, right hypochondrium, left hypochondriac region. Extending, superior extent was 10 centimeter below the ziphi sternum. Inferior extent was one centimeter above the umbilicus, uh, and uh, right extent was along the midclavicular line, and left was around two to centimeters medial to the left midclavicular line. Lump was well below the bil bilateral coastal margins, becoming less prominent upon elevation of head. It was non-mobile with no visible gastric peristalsis, visible intestinal peristalsis, or no movements with respiration. The skin appeared normal, no ulcers, sinuses, or fistulas, no engorged veins, or discoloration, or pulsations, and or peristalsis noted. Umbilicus was normal, inverted, but was displaced downwards. The hernial orifices appeared normal. Bilateral flank and spine was normal. How can someone measure the lump upon inspection? Sir, uh, it was a rough measurement, sir. Rough meaning of the inspection, the answer is Okay. These are the finding in the palpations. And you are giving a very precise... Yeah, you are saying 11 by 13 centimeters. If you had said about 10 centimeter in diameter, okay. But you can't wow. mention the exact dimensions on inspection. Even extension, exactly. These are the findings of the palpation, not inspection. And Srinivas, you used the word about, but you used it at a wrong place. In weight, you said about 60 kg, which should have been precise. I mean, to the extent of it would have been 60.3 kg, I, I mean, we would have accepted it. But because that weight is taken, and in lump in inspection, you are uh, being so precise. So remember, you see, that is what we want. These are the issues. You, uh, you have well read everything. You know about the whole thing. But you see the presentation. These small things will nag the examiner. And then uh, the... The whole viva goes haywire. You know, if it goes in some other direction, then you are stuck. Sir. And, uh, and don't repeat, like you have already said no visible uh, gastric or intestinal peristalsis. And again, you say no peristalsis. So there's no need to repeat your findings. Uh, and one, day, one way, say you have a, probably a tendency of using English. Uh, you know, don't try and impress the examiner by English. You see, first thing you don't know how good an examiner. Most of the examiners, because they have studied before you, their English will be definitely better than you. I know the present day student, the English, our English is much better than any student of today. So you have used the word coherent, well oriented. All coherent, incoherent fellow is not that. This orientation is uh, English means incoherent. You should have said conscious. Sir. Use the same standard words, then you will no, never be wrong because that is the words being used by Hutchison, uh, 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 Kedas, all books of clinical medicine. Incoherent is a word which you are using, which are being used in English literature. Who do not know the exact medical uh, uh, thing. So don't use too many fancy uh, English words. 
If you must don't take it as a personal for you, this is for all. Yeah, yeah, these are, these are all for all the students. Yeah, students. Yeah. yeah, so this is for all the students. All the students. Yeah. This is for yeah. everyone. This is a, what we are saying that this is what ha happens in exam. Yeah. You know everything about this case, and uh, but by the time uh, I think your time uh, is limited. In that time, you have to convey to the examiner and convince the examiner that you have uh, uh, correctly uh, diagnosed and managed the uh, uh, case. But in between, if you are caught like this, and this invariably happens, that the examiner takes you somewhere else, and then your attention is diverted, and then you don't know how to come out of it. This happens with all students, most majority of these students. Hmm. Palpation. Upon palpation, no, uh, the lump was non-tender, no local rise of temperature. For smooth surfaced, solitary lump of 11 to 13 centimeter palpated in epigastric region, umbilicus and bilateral hypochondriac region. Inspectory findings were confirmed. Uh, it had well-defined margins with no intrinsic mobility or change with posture, uh, change of position with posture or with respiration. On knee elbow position, it, it did not fall freely. There was no hepatosplenomegaly or no other palpable lumps. Upon percussion, there was a uh, there was a dull note heard with no uh, no ascites, no shifting dullness, no ascites. Sir. On auscultation, no succussion splash was heard. Rest of the systemic examination was normal. Final diagnosis, sir. Uh, it's a case of a post-traumatic pancreatic injury with recurrent pseudocyst formation with probable ductal disruption. Uh, with a with an endoscopic procedure which might have failed, sir. Failed endoscopic procedure, sir. So trauma and injury are two different things. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, traumatic pancreatic. Either say pancreatic injury or say post-traumatic pancreatitis, as you said earlier. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Yes. So what will you do, uh, sir? I would like to first uh, see uh, the old old investigations which were done previously. Mm -hmm. And uh, what endoscopic procedure was done in the patient, I would like to also review that. So which old investigation you want to see? Uh, sir, the patient had under, uh, undergone CECT abdomen in his second admission. I would okay. like to see that once more. Let's see. Let's see. This is actually a non-contrast image, sir. Uh, show axial cut showing non contrast image. Non IV contrast. Non IV contrast. Sorry. Non IV contrast image, sir. Uh, the next image is con uh, IV contrast image. I'll... This is an IV contrast image. Uh, uh, axial cuts of IV contrast image from the uh, of the lower thorax and the abdomen, sir. Uh, showing out uh, liver, which is normal in shape. So before, sorry, before you start reading any uh, investigation or image, you have to put it in the correct chronological perspective. When is this CT done in relation to the trauma? Uh, sir, this was done one month after trauma. That is during his yes. second admission, sir. Yes. And he presented with lump in abdomen at that yes. time. Sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Uh, sir, uh, the liver appears to be normal in uh, shape. There is no atrophy, hypertrophy complex. Uh, along with that, uh, yeah. Why do you specifically mention no atrophy, hypertrophy complex? Sir, uh, I want to rule out any vascular injuries because uh, pancreatic injuries are generally associated with vascular injuries or injury to the duodenum in that region, sir. So, uh, delayed presentation of this can present with uh, an atrophy, a hypertrophy complex of liver cell. Oh, so, uh, which vascular injury you expect along with pancreatic injury? Uh, sir, uh, there can be a superior mesenteric injury, sir. Uh, there mm -hmm. can also be a celiac injury uh, mm -hmm. in vicinity. So, which one of these will cause atrophy, hypertrophy? Sir, uh, superior mesenteric may cause, uh, sorry, uh, celiac may cause, sir. Well, how? 
celiac axis injury how will it cause what is the commonest cause of atrophy hypertrophy sir uh, uh, commonest cause is sir biliary obstruction sir when is oh, biliary obstruction? biliary obstruction can cause but what is the commonest cause what is the disease that we will uh, it is the portal it. portal venous and portal that also venous. unilateral See, pancreatic injury will be associated or may be associated with injury to the celiac, splenic vein, superior mesenteric vessels, vein, portal vein, but very unlikely that pancreatic injury will be associated with a right or left portal vein injury. That is what will or may cause atrophy, hypertrophy, isn't it? Yes, sir. So I don't think any text uh, which you read or any chapter which you read about pancreatic trauma would talk of atrophy, atrophy hypertrophy. Yeah. So that is why thing. that is not the first thing which you need to mention. Even if you want to mention, that is not the first thing to mention. And I don't think it is related to pancreatic injury. Okay, carry on. Yeah. Uh, lesser sac, uh, lesser sac of uh, lesser sac shows out the. Uh, Hypodense, uh, sorry, mixed uh, mixed density. You have the cursor control with you? No. Yes, sir. I do have one second. But he's not being transmitted. One minute, sir. sir. No, the image is being transmitted from us. So that is okay. Mm. Okay. Just describe because I don't think you can point out. Mm. Ah, yes, yes. We can see your red cursor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please show show everything. Ah, sir. For the sake of other students. This yes. Is, this Where is the is stomach. Sir, uh, one second. This is a stomach, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where is the collection? Sir, collection is present retrogastrically, sir, which is compressing. Yes, yes. Put your cursor on the collection. Sir, in the lower first image, sir. Mm. Uh, it is compressing over the uh, the distal part of the stomach and yeah. the duodenum, which is shown, sir. Mm. Yeah, in so the, the collection is more in relation to the head of the pancreas. It is lying behind the distal part of the stomach, which is okay. compressed. And it is also compressing the second part of duodenum, as you see in the last cut. You see yes, the sir. last cut? Yes, sir. Here you can see the duodenum. So the uh, collection is lying medial or to the left of the duodenum and posterior to the stomach. Stomach, sir. What else does it show? Sir, uh, pancreas, pancreatic parenchyma appears to be normal with well perfused uh, perfusion, sir. Pancreatic parenchyma in which part? Distal, distal part of the pancreatic parenchyma, distal to the cystic oh, region. Yeah. Distal yeah, so the yeah, beyond the neck of the pancreas. Appears to be humble. you don't see the parenchyma at least in these cuts in the head, you see the parenchyma in the neck and the complete tail. body and tail, tail of, of the pancreas. pancreas. Yes, sir. Uh, spleen appears to be no, no, but, but, uh, pancreatic duct also seems to be dilated. Yes, sir. Pancreatic duct is visible in this cut, sir. Uh, so prominent, prominent. prominent. Yes. Yes, Anything noted. else about the collection? Have you uh, finished with the collection? No, sir, not yet, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, sir, altered. Altered densities are seen. Mm -hmm. I've seen the lower third slide, sir. Yes. Uh, along with that. Uh, so there uh, are some hyperdense lesions. Hyperdense. Or, uh, uh, hyperdense. Uh, what do we say? Hmm? Hyperdensities in the collection, which indicates. Uh, sir, it can be either a neck, uh, it can be a hemorrhage. Or it can be a, a necrotic material in it, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, next. Uh, there appears to be no IHBRD uh, noted, sir. And uh, uh, pancreas and, uh, sorry, sir, spleen appears to be normal. Uh, mm -hmm. There appears to be no collateral formation. Mm -hmm. Where? Sir, uh, along the greater curvature of the stomach, sir. Yeah, so say that in the left abdomen or around the stomach, in the perisplenic area, in the splenic hilum, I don't see collaterals. Can you trace the splenic vein? Uh, one second. Yeah. Sir, this one, sir. One minute. 
in this yeah, image. So, yeah, you see it in parts. Yes, in that cut, you see it at the hilum, and then you see it behind the pancreas in the first cut in the last row, and also in the second cut in the last row. Sir, so whatever part of the splenic vein is seen, it appears to be normal. normal. Okay. Then, so you have seen this. This is before the endoscopic intervention, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Before the endoscopic intervention, sir. So then the endoscopic intervention was done. Yes, sir. Hmm. Then, now sir, what do you want? Yeah. CT scan report. Uh, should hmm. I proceed ahead or should I read this, sir? No, that's okay. That's fine. Anything which we have missed, which is there in the report? No, sir. Okay. Then, next. Endoscopically, the patient underwent an endoscopic cystodeuterostomy, sir. Hmm. With, uh, with placement of a nasocystic drain. Mm -hmm. uh, so, following this, this... This could have come out easily in the history because patient would have told you that there was a tube coming out of my nose, how long it stays. We completely missed on this part of the history. Sir. And then, then we were discussing, we also did not discuss this, that this is also one of the options. So plastic stent, single stent, multiple stent, lamps, and ENCD, endoscopic nasocystic drain, also is an option. Sir, hmm. uh, sir these are current investigation, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, uh, this is current investigation. Bilirubin is 1.4. Uh, direct is 0. 0.6. Don't uh, read. Don't read. Don't read. Just mention the abnormalities or interpretation. Patient has hyperamylasemia uh, and uh, lipase levels suggestive of pancreatitis, sir, currently. So high amylase and lipase levels always indicate uh, pancreatitis? No, sir. Uh, in chronic pancreatitis, uh, occasionally there can be a low, a low or normal amylase or lipase level, sir. No, no. High, because... high levels mean only acute pancreatitis. Can they be elevated in some other condition? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, amylase level can be. Uh, so lipase can be specific for pan uh, is specific for pancreas. Amylase mm -hmm. can be elevated in other conditions like cyanoadenitis or any perforation peritonitis or appendicitis or ovarian torsion also, sir. No, what I was trying to ask that if you have a pseudocyst, can amylase lipase levels be high even if there is no ongoing acute pancreatitis? No, sir. Because the collection is actually amylase is intracystic. Uh, the, the intracystic level is elevated, not the serum level, sir. Check on that. I think the persistently elevated the serum amylase at least indicates a fluid collection or a pseudocyst, but check on that. I is think Anand true, also confirms that. Patient, patient who is having persistently raised amylase level with fluid collection, it suggests uh, pseudocyst formation. So both my colleagues confirm that, that if you have a fluid collection or pseudocyst with a ductal communication, yes, sir. then serum amylase levels can be elevated without ongoing acute pancreatitis, okay? Uh, sir, uh, may yeah. I ask a question, sir? Yes, yes, please. Uh, sir, if pseudocyst is communicating with the duct, why should a pseudocyst form? Right. Because the whole fluid is coming out there. No, now we are talking of uh, trauma. We are talking in relation to trauma. So if there is a ductal disruption, yes, then uh, the pseudocyst uh, uh, is a communicating pseudocyst, so it has to be drained uh, to leave. Otherwise, uh, there is an ongoing uh, communication. Sinova asked, Sinova asked, yes, sir. This question, I don't know why you asked. What happens to the pancreatic juice? Is uh, uh, produced episodically or it is produced uh, around the uh, uh, clock? Continuously, sir. Yeah, just the so if the continuous production is there. So obviously, uh, the uh, the space uh, inside the pancreatic duct is not enough for the amount of uh, uh, juice produced in a whole day, and that is going through a normal opening into the intestine. So that is why there is no collection. Now you are just asking the opposite question. Since there is a complete disruption, 
and there is no communication of the duct a uh, 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 distant uh, uh, to the uh, say uh, injury it is not going to ingesty uh, and that is why that juice is being secreted out and there is a, a, a pseudo wall formation and that is uh, it becomes a pseudo cyst that is why the cyst is there the same mechanism for all cysts are uh, all pseudo cysts are not not necessarily communicating with it okay sir so but, if uh, uh, or, or there is thing post traumatic it, it is showing that there is no dilatation of the distal duct normally they, they heal by stitcher there will be a, a, a dilatation of the distal duct it is a bit you can say prominent but this is a communicating cyst yes and that is why, that is why it is forming a three time general form and dr vinay mahala also added that uh, uh that is the mechanism for the causation of pancreatic ascites right. and pancreatic pleural effusion yeah. in fact the other way is right that if there is no major ductal disruption or communication then most peripancreatic acute peri uh, acute uh, pancreatic or peripancreatic fluid collections will resolve yes so that is the major uh, difference between a communicating and a non communicating okay so it is the other way round Yeah, carry on, sir. Uh, the current uh, hemoglobin is thirteen point six with a total count of fourteen thousand. Platelet counts marginally elevated, sir. Not marginally. What is the upper limit of platelet counts, sir? Four point five lakhs at our center, sir. One point five to four point five lab standard, sir. Four point five, sir. I thought it is three hundred. One point five. Five point five. Five point five. Oh, sorry, I was wrong. Okay. अच्छा. हाँ, I thought three hundred. Okay, carry on. Yes, yes. Next. The uh, patient uh, under uh, renal function tests were done currently uh, in the current admission, which is within normal limit, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to also uh, get a MR, uh, MRI abdomen, MRCP. Uh, to see whether there is any ductal communication with that of the pseudo cyst, sir. Mm. How will that show communication, sir? A uh, gold standard is in uh, ERCP, sir. But yeah, because MR like CT is a static investigation. It may show proximity. It may show yeah, disruption. Yeah, but the, communication the will be difficult. You can not. just make a conjecture. Okay, fine. So what? What next? We have any current imaging? Yes, sir, uh, MRI was done. MRI, MRCP, abdomen was done, hmm. sir. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Axial, uh, axial cuts. Uh, axial imaging of T two weighted images showing uh, hyper intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Showing out hyper intense uh, signals in the retrogastric region, sir, uh, mm -hmm. compressing the stomach or displacing the stomach anteriorly mm -hmm. uh, with compression over the duodenum. Uh, liver appears to be normal, no in, uh, no IHBRD. So since you have a previous imaging, you should always compare. So is it same location? Is it same size? Is it the same nature? Sir, uh, location happens to be the same. Uh, yes. Location happens to be the same. However, uh, size has probably increased. Probably increased, sir. It looks larger than what we saw on the CT scan. CT scan, sir. And uh, in the third image here, uh, mm -hmm. we can see dilated MPD, which is visualized, sir. Mm -hmm. so these cuts. Prominent, I would say. Prominent. Uh, prominent uh, vision. So, as we were pointing out in a static image, whether sure. CT or MR, it is very, very difficult to say that whether there is communication or not. That you can do only on a dynamic study. Sir, sure. you can say that it looks as if there is a major uh, injury, major disruption, and collection, but you cannot be hundred percent sure based on this. Also, indirectly, you can say because it has persisted. And persisted even after an endoscopic intervention. So most likely there is a major ductal disruption. 
Yes, sir. So what will you do? Any other investigation you want? Uh, sir, I would prefer to go for a ERCP, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, with what intent? Uh, sir, ERCP with uh, uh, current uh, current indication for uh, sir DDS happens to be a therapeutic indication only, sir, for ERCP. Uh, however, ductal communication can also be visualized. So what what uh, therapeutic intervention you want to do with the ERCP? Uh, sir, we can go ahead with a trans ductal stenting if uh, trans papillary stenting if possible, sir. With such a large cyst sitting there and compressing the head of the pancreas almost completely, do you think it will be possible for any endoscopist to get into the distal pancreatic duct? Or, or difficult, we easy? As well, try out, uh, we can attempt out uh, again cystogastrostomy if possible, sir. Yeah, I think uh, check with your endoscopy colleagues, but with such a large cyst sitting there, it, they will find it very difficult to manipulate a guide wire, one through the papilla and then through the papilla into the proximal pancreatic duct and then go across into the distal pancreatic duct, which we are trying to do, especially when we suspect that there is a major ductal. It may even be a complete transaction because the way the patient has developed uh, steatoria uh, indicates that all the pancreatic juice is probably coming into this. Uh, hardly anything is going into the bowel. Otherwise, why should a pancreatic injury in uh, a few months' time produce uh, steatoria? He has clinically obvious steatoria. So all these things point out towards a major ductal disruption, maybe with even separation. Sir. And with such a large cyst sitting there, technically it will be very difficult and demanding. So I think uh, even if an endoscopist wants to bridge this defect and put a stent in the pancreatic duct, he would probably first drain the cyst either into the stomach or duodenum and then try to do that. Yes, sir. So I think we are already at 10. Uh, anything, Ajay, you want to add? He, he said that uh, with this MRCP now, this is second recurrence. How do you explain, you know, first time it was endoscopically drained. Yes, sir. Second time it re reappeared, then it disappeared. And this is, you are saying in your history also that this is the third uh, uh, recurrence. So yes, uh, uh, what happened the second time? Sir, it was as mentioned in the second time. No, 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 and only one, one pastoral stand and one you Srivas, are you able to hear us? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Can you yeah. repeat? Any eight ten This is your patient, Srinivas? Uh, sir, this is from medical gastro, sir. Uh, so what is the plan of management? Uh, uh, sir, we, uh, they were planning again for an ERCP for the patient. Mm -hmm. And endoscopic uh, intervention was planned, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. It was planned for yesterday evening, actually. I, I couldn't follow up after, afterwards. I'll, I'll follow up and I'll inform, sir. Yeah, you need to check whether they are going for cyst drainage first followed by ductal intervention or directly they are going to attempt a ductal intervention. Yes, sir. You are, you are right that if you are able to place a stent in the pancreatic duct without draining the fluid, then the fluid may get absorbed on its own. But uh, considering the size uh, we all felt that it probably will be easier if you drain the fluid collection into the viscous first and then try to do the pancreatic uh, stenting. Yes, sir. Okay. So, when is your exam? Uh, sir, uh, we have given our theory. We are waiting for uh, results. Sir. So, maybe, uh, maybe one of the second year students in the audience, uh, if uh, one of you can volunteer to prepare management of pancreatic injuries, then some of the issues can be covered and I can request uh, one of the experts to be a moderator. 
Okay. So uh, anyone who wants to volunteer, please contact Dr. Anand Nagar. So I think we will close the session and uh, uh, send me a mail uh, again. Uh, just write uh, pseudocyst in the subject of the mail. So I'll send you the chapter on pseudocyst. Okay. Yes, sir. All the students. Yeah. So we, we will close. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.